What's up, class? Um, just second video here. I just want to make a uh, correction up here. I just realized I did the math. It didn't look right. I did the math, and this is not the answer here. Um, it should be 59.5. So I, I did something wrong in my calculator. Um, 59.5. So your two answers here for uh, number 11 are 59.5, and the second one is 55.75. And so this is the spiny one, and this is the Greenland shark. Now you realize which one is longer, and it's this guy. Okay, number 12, next question. Spiny dogfish sharks, spiny dog, and this is the next page, so uh, please turn your page to page 60 now. Spiny dogfish sharks will be 59.5 centimeters long. And Greenland sharks will be 55 Point seven five centimeters long when they are 25 years old and remember this is not the age they die but this is just an age they just made up and so you kind of figured out how long they are and if you see one in the ocean these uh, scientists will will measure it right with a um, some kind of you know probably satellite or some kind of drone and they'll measure it with using technology. Then, then from that measurement, they'll make a guess of how old it is, um, which is pretty cool. Problem three, using linear regression. And what does regression mean? That's a key word here, regression. Um, remember, progress or progress, progression means to go forward. Regression means to go back. Or to digress means to not go forward. So to go back. I want to just say go back, right? Or if you're graphing it, it's going to go downhill, right? And so this could be a lot of things. Um, and that humans actually regress after a certain age. They get kind of shorter. Um, and so does your bank account, right? When you retire, your bank account, you have so much money in it, and it's going to go downhill. It's going to regress. Um, so this is good to know because uh, populations regress and increase depending upon what it is and what they have. And so here we go. The table shows populations, populations of San Diego and Detroit, right? What we know about San Diego and Detroit is San Diego is sunny, right? Detroit is snowy and cold, and there's lots of factories. Um, but this was very popular, right, a long time ago. Now it's decreasing, I can tell you that, because the factories are closing. All the car plants are going overseas, and San Diego is going bigger because it's sunny and people want to live in nice places like San Diego. Uh, when the populations of these regions are equal, when are they equal? What was the population? So let's look at these and see what they have to say. Circle the first calculator step in solving the problem. So what are you going to do first to solve this problem, number 13? So you're going to calculate the intersection, you're going to enter the data into the list, or you're going to enter Y. You're going to enter the data into the list, right? And we don't have these type of calculators, so I'm going to do all the work for you here and um, there are certain scientific calculators you can use to solve this, but we're not going to do this. And so I'm just going to show you how, what the answers are and move forward. Okay, number 14. Write the name of the list you will use. So this is L1. You can make up anything for this if you did it. Um, or L2, I'm sorry. This is L3. And it says since 51 is going to be L1. Circle the pair of equations you will graph. And we're going to do these two right here. And you would do that by looking up here at the data up there. Um, but looking at the data, you can see San Diego is not a big city, 30, 334,000. It's about the size of like Cincinnati, Dayton area. Um, and then it's getting bigger every year. Three, 576, 573, 696, 875, 1.1 million, 1.2 million. Detroit, 1950, when, right after the war, War II, uh, 1.8 million. Then 1.6 million, 1.5 million, 1.2 million, 1 million, and now less than a million 20 years ago. So following that data, I'm assuming San Diego is probably going to be about 1.5 million now. And Detroit is probably um, around 800,000, I would say, um, range. I could be wrong, um, but that's just looking at the data there. Circle in you out the graph that does not show the regression lines. So this one does not show the regression lines. And this can't be true. Um, remember, it's got to be positive, positive. So it's got to be in this this factor to be regression lines. And here's the regression line of Detroit going downhill. It's Detroit. And this is San Diego going up. 
You can see the regression lines. Number 17, underline the correct word to complete each sentence. The x-axis corresponds to the number of years since 1950. This is the x-axis right here. This is 1950. All right, years are getting bigger, right? The y-axis corresponds with the population. So this is the population. Going population, and this is the years, right? The years have to go on this axis. They have to be getting bigger, right? And the population gets higher for San Diego. As the years go on, population gets smaller for Detroit. 18, the coordinates are what? when they intersect. And this is just doing the data and the math. And I'm going to give you the answer for this one because we didn't do it all. And we're going to say 1.074 comma 919. The populations of San Diego and Detroit were equal sometime during the year of what? 1990. And how do we know that? We take It's because the graph says 1950. Since 1950, uh, you have to add this 40 to 1950. And you get right 1990.3 actually um the population was about and it says up here about you could put 1075000 that's an about i don't know why they picked this i would just say a million um, number four classify the system without graphing so this is without graphing now turn the page so you have two um two equations here which we've talked about and independent, dependent, or inconsistent. They're asking you, which one is it? Um, is it going to be independent, dependent, or inconsistent? Write each equation in slope-intercept form. So we're going to change these, right? All you have to do is add 3x to the side. And you get y by itself to 3x plus 4, right? In this one, again, you're going, to add, you're going to subtract x. This one's a little more difficult. And then you're going to divide by 3, right, on each side. Um, I mean, multiply by 3, negative 3, actually. So the answer, I'm going to give it to you here, looks like that. And let's uh, let's show the multiplication by 3, because I, I enjoy doing equations. It should be uh, negative x plus 1. Multiply the entire equation by 3. So these are going to cross, negative 3, I should say. And these are cross off, y would be by itself. So negative 3 times negative x is actually a positive 3x. Negative 3 times 1 is going to be negative 3. And that's your equation we just did right there. So that was fun to do. I like doing equations like that. The slope of negative 3x plus y equals 4 is 3. And the slope of x minus 1 third y equals 1 is also 3. So the slopes are the same. Same slope. What does that mean? We talked about that earlier. If they have the same slope, they're going to be parallel. Right? So the y-intercept of negative 3x plus y equals 4 is 4. And the y-intercept of this is negative 3. So they're different y-intercepts. They're not the same line. So you know they're parallel. Underline the correct words and complete the sentence. Because the slopes and lines are equal, right? That's an underline, by the way. And the y-intercepts are different, right? The system is going to be inconsistent, right? They're never going to touch each other. So if these were the populations of two cities, let's say uh, San Diego and maybe another city that's growing is Atlanta, right? So they're growing the same amount, exactly. I mean, that's impossible to happen, but maybe it is growing the same amount. They're never going to touch. So their populations will grow continuously at the same rate. Okay. Those are reasons why we study this. Um, you can learn a lot about anything in life by doing systems of equations. That's why I love it. Um, do you understand? Lesson check, right? This is what you do on your own. You show it to me. You get credit for this. Vocabulary, is it, a, is it possible for a system of equations to be both independent and inconsistent? Explain. Okay, and I'm going to give you the answer to this, so now you, can, now you can answer it and explain it yourself. The graphs of inconsistent systems are parallel. True. Inconsistent are parallel. That is true. They're going to look like this. Right? Number 24, the graphs of independent systems intersect at one point. True. So they're going to be like this. 
right? So they're asking, is it possible to be both this and this? Explain. Is it possible to be parallel and intersect? Right? Well, think of two roads in Beaver Creek. Let's look at uh, Kemp Road. If you know that is, that's where the Board of Education is, uh, and the fireplace and fire uh, stations over there, and also Idle Hour. And you have a road like Dayton Xenia. Right? Dayton Xenia is where the Beaver Creek High School is. Do these roads intersect and are they parallel at the same time? Explain what these roads do. And then you'll understand how to do this system. Are they independent and inconsistent, inconsistent at the same time? Is that possible? Is it possible to be both? That's what you have to explain. Please give me at least one to two sentences here of why it's possible to be both or you can't be both, right? So that's it for 3-1. Um, do the math success at the end, right? You can do that stuff um, that you understand and show how well you solve linear equations. So do that. You'll get your credits.